Thank you, Mike Chase. Thank you very much, Dr. Schager. Um, <laughs> cohorts, <laughs> professors, students in Zoom. This is Buringan, the land where all that was lost is found, which is a belief in the Philippines in a lost city from the past. My presentation will be a multi-species anthropology of the antediluvian Philippines. Now, when we say antediluvian in the scientific realm, it would mean the epoch of around 2 million years ago to about 10,000 years ago, which um, was around the time of the sea level um, rising. So um, antediluvian is referring to uh, before the flood um, in scientific terms. So uh, this project actually started uh, with my passion in restoring my people's culture. As some of you may know, I'm a Filipino-American uh, anthropologist, and that is why at some points I seem as such that I'm very passionate about the study and the research I'm doing after living in the Philippines for almost six years. Um, I was filled with, with um, very powerful um, emotions, thoughts, feelings, and all of the questions that I've had throughout my life had been answered. So the importance of having one's culture restored, not only on the individual level, but on the cultural and holistic level, um, I firsthand can say there's nothing more powerful or greater than that. And that is why um, I am passionate about this. Isabella de los Reyes was one of the first anthropologists, ethnographers, and uh, great leaders of the revolution in the fight for independence and freedom against uh, Spain and the colonial powers. So he also found it very important to restore the culture. And he wrote this book and performed this ethnography with all of the indigenous peoples throughout the Philippines in the late 19th century. The unfortunate part is that until this very day, it's never been translated. And the majority of Filipinos today don't speak Spanish as they did during his time. And what I found within this book is extremely powerful. And 90% of it is not known to the average Filipino. And that's why it was important and powerful for me to try and take this on and translate um, La Religion Antigua de los Filipinos, which means the ancient religions of the Philippines and the, the indigenous Filipino people. So that's how this project got started. I'm 11 chapters in. Um, I've got about 20 more to go. I'm hoping that I can push through and get this translated uh, very soon because I feel like it's important to the Filipinos, the Philippines, and the culture, because there's a lot of powerful things um, locked inside. So everything you see here in this presentation and here, I found within this book. This here is the Babaylan, or one of the high priestess of the ancient Philippines. These here are the Anitos, which were not only our ancestors, but powerful elements um, dependent upon the region. So shall we start at the beginning? Most folks don't know this, but the Philippines was never connected to any great continental landmass. It was never a part of Pangaea. The Philippines is a true archipelago in the sense that it was created through subduction and volcanic activity similar to Hawaii. 
which it refers to the tectonic plates shifting, which you can see here, and the volcanic activity pushing landmass up. And this was around 66 million years ago. And that is why, one of the reasons why everybody always asks, uh, you know, where's the dinosaurs in the Philippines? Um, kids are always looking for them and, you know, it's, it's, it, there is none. It's because dinosaurs went extinct about 66 million years ago and um, the Philippines was created about 52 million years ago. So there's a bit of, it's about a 10 million year gap or so um, between those two events. And this is kind of where the, the, the mystery uh, begins. And the story um, starts because one of the issues here is, if y'all are familiar with the deepest part of the ocean in this planet, um, the Mariana Trench, 35,856 feet. And the Challenger Deep, which is the deepest part of the Mariana Trench, is right off of the coast of the Philippines. But there's also deep trenches, um, the deepest in the world um, in comparison, that carve out the entirety of the Philippines. So on this side, you have the Philippine Trench, which is uh, reaching just about the same depth of the Mariana. And on this side, you have the Manila Trench, the Negros Trench, and the Cotabato Trench, which carve out the entirety of the Philippines um, at such a depth that also um, delineates and signifies that there's no possible way for it to have ever been um, connected to any landmass. As you can see here, the levels, and we have Pangea over here on the formation of this area. The only part that was ever connected was here, Palawan, um, but it was also never connected to the mainland Philippines in such a way where migrational patterns um, could have taken place. Another very interesting aspect of the Philippines is it is the only place in the world that has an ancient lake, which is volcanic, a volcanic ancient lake that is over 1 million years old. There's no other place in the world that has a volcanic lake over 1 million years old. And that basically means one consistent body of water, fresh body of water that has remained permanent and intact for over 1 million years. So, um, go ahead, next slide, please. Oops, out of time. Okay. So, basically, if we can get through this really quickly, one of the very interesting things about the Philippines is that there is evidence, and this is the study that we have here, that there was multiple ancient hominids residing in the Philippines at the same time, uh, you have um, Neanderthal, Denisovan, Homo luzonensis, modern Homo sapien. And this study done at the University of Uppsala just recently, 2021, shows that the highest ever levels of living Denisovan DNA, more than 40% of what has ever been previously found before, is in the Filipino indigenous Aita populations. And not only that, but the admixture includes not only Denisovan, but Neanderthal, a mysterious third homo uh, species yet to be discovered, and modern Homo sapien. So the question is how did they get there? If they were never connected to any landmass. There's also evidence of other great megafauna, pushed rhino bones 600 to 700,000 years old, and the oldest ever in the world found cave paintings in Sulawesi, which is just to the south of the Philippines on the other side of the Wallacea-Huxley line, 
which delineates the Philippines as being so um, diverse in not only plant and animal life, but, but um, the speciation uh, classifies it as a realm and not a normal um, biological classification because of how diverse it is. Here is a picture of the Aitam Magbukan, one of these um, indigenous peoples of the Philippines. I'm proposing that the ancient Genesovans were great seafarers and shipbuilders, navigated the oceans, traveled, circumnavigated to many different lands, and had many great technologies. These are all great ships that were there when the, pre when the Spanish arrived. Um, all of these ships, here is um, one of the ships, um, persons, these all come from the codices, similar to those um, that were done in Mexico, were also done in the Philippines. All of these images here are from there, and um, some of these ancient great ships, the records, as they went along. Here is some evidence and some also images from those codices. These over here are from the Boxer Codices. Some, uh, when the Spanish arrived, the Filipinos already had firearms. They had handguns, they had cannons, they had masterful metallurgy, um, great um, pottery, and they had their own writing system. And as you can see, the gold mastercraft work that was um, presented in the Philippines was absolutely um, beautiful. <laughs> In conclusion, here are some more photos of the Aita Magbukan. The population, the indigenous population of the Philippines that present this very powerful information of being a mix of ancient hominids, species. And as you can see, the greatest level of the haplogroup B in all these populations is here in the Philippines, 24% in the Aita populations. All of the other tests along the route and into some indigenous tribes in South America, Central America, and North America present a genetic relation to these um, same B haplogroups and uh, particularly South America B4 uh, haplogroup which leads also to my um, theory, thesis, that these ancient hominids had ships, they had shipcraft, they had technology, they had um, traveled from the Asias to the Americas and probably back and forth. And the Bajau sea, sea Gypsies are here another very diverse and interesting population group of the Philippines that have a 50% larger spleen than any other human found on earth. They can stay underwater for up to 13 minutes. The genetic diversity and the strange um, presentations in this are absolutely amazing. And I think that there is a wonderful story here that needs to be presented to the world and needs to get fleshed out. And this is pre-colonial connections between indigenous peoples of the Philippines and Southeast Asia and the Americas prior to the arrival of the Spaniards. Last but not least, I had a course here where they talked about the extinction of these ancient hominids. And I don't know what it was, but it reached into me and it grabbed my uh, heart strings and pulled at them. And I, and I wrote in one of the, I believe it was to Mary Glenn, um, and the thing that I prefer not to think of them as being extinct. Um, and I think this information shows that they're not, they're still here. And we are still here. And I think it's much, more powerful to consider them as living on through us, through our genes. And that is the story 
that my ancestors have handed down to me and I have now handed on to you. And I wish I had more time to <laughs> present it in a proper way. But, but that being said, this is the multi-species anthropology of the anti-delivering Philippines. I was trying to put a million something odd years into 10 minutes. <laughs> it's really hard to do. <laughs> I have a question. If, if yeah, I go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, first of all, great job. Your visuals are spectacular. Um, I can tell that this is really a labor of love for you. The discussion around the Denisovans as seafaring reminds me of our earlier debate topic around the kelp highway hypothesis and alternative routes taken to disperse into the Americas. Um, but my question really is, if, if you could design a multi-species ethnography based in the Philippines right now, what would you seek to uncover or accomplish with that ethnography? Uh, thank you, Rhiannon. That's a wonderful question. Um, everything. <laughs> <laughs> This is, just, <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg. What I really wasn't able to get into was that the only other populations besides the Philippines and Southeast Asia and just that, that little tip of, of, um, of Asia here on the coastline, the only other um, region of the world that expresses Denisovan ancestry and DNA is found in the Americas with the indigenous populations of the Americas. It's not found anywhere in, in, in any other locations. Um, to any um, detectable degree. So there is, this is why it's so difficult for me to like talk about this stuff because I like geek out on it and I want to talk about it for hours and hours, but I have to condense it in such a short period of time. But if I was able to get to the Philippines and have some research capabilities to do that, this is why I'm really driving this issue home and I really want to champion it because there is not the, the world, the, the, the global um, anthropological community has not given, um, not only the Philippines, but the Americas, the um, attention and the um, story and the presentation that it deserves. Because there's a story there that is absolutely amazing. A recent um, ar um, archeological discovery in San Diego actually shows butchered uh, stegodon, mastodon uh, bones, that date back over 100,000 years. While it's not 100% verified, all of the archeological information that's there um, leads one to find no other assumption than um, accepting that date. And that's why I wanna bring this story out because there's a big piece of our story that's missing and that's not getting the attention even though a lot of folks know that the evidence is there. And that's why I want to concentrate at first my point of providence, which is the Philippines, and um, second, connect it with the um, other indigenous peoples throughout the world. Uh, because I often say that I don't want history. I don't want history. I want the true story. And that's what I'm trying to get at. And that's why I want everybody's support. So. We gotta do it together, you know. It's really hard to do things just on your own. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I hope that kind of answered your question in a roundabout way. Yeah, um, yeah, excellent. I I hope to see uh, multi-species ethnography from you sometime in the future. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rianne, and thank you, Dr. Homer, as well, because you planted the multi-species seed in my mind, uh, <laughs> sir. So <laughs> great. It's great, and I'm really excited about about this line of work that you're that you're investigating, and I, I look forward to seeing what you do with it as well, and what the next steps are. All right, thank you, Chase. We're done now, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time we're done for sure. There you go. I don't know how. I'm sorry for the like two weeks ago. Oh. So. <laughs> that means um, that's that is the I know. Uh, yeah, it's um, the Spanish uh, gave it. Gave it uh, gave